Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us today for Has Your Revenue Growth Slowed? Here's how to turn it around using security offerings. Uh, before we get started with the webcast, and I turn it over to Guy Cunningham, um, just a few housekeeping notes. Uh, you can ask any questions you have in the questions box on the right-hand control panel. Um, we will try to get as, to as many questions as we can at the end of the webcast. Secondly, we are recording this webcast, so you will be available to, or we will be sending out a recording of it to everybody who attended and registered. So um, be on the lookout for that email in the coming days. Let's take a quick look at the agenda um, before we get started. First of all, Guy Cunningham is going to deliver us an introduction to NetSurian. Um, then we'll turn it over to David Stelzel, the author of The House in the Cloud. Um, and he'll run through some great slides for us there. Um, then Guy will take it back and talk about NetSurian cyber approach, cybersecurity approach. And finally, we will continue or conclude with a special offer and then some Q&A. Just a quick introduction, Guy Cunningham, the Vice President of Channel Sales and Alliances for NetSurian. He'll be the first voice that you hear. And then David Stelzel, the author of The House in the Cloud, will pick up once Guy is completed. So Guy, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on over to you. Great, thanks David. I'm actually gonna turn on my uh, my camera. So maybe you guys can see me. If, if anybody's been to one of the trade shows that we've been at over the, the past couple of years, you'll recognize these t-shirts, the What's Up Breaches t-shirts. They tend to be a, a hit at the, the trade shows and the conferences. So I thought I'd represent <clears throat> today. Appreciate the chance to talk with everybody. Um, many of you know who NetSurian is, and we thank you for your partnership and for your interest in our products. Uh, for those of you that are new to NetSurian, I'm gonna spend just a handful of minutes talking about uh, NetSurian at a high level, who we are, uh, where we are today, and where we're headed as an organization. Introduce a, a new product to you, and then I'm gonna quickly hand it over to David Stelzel. Um, so the reason why we have David Stelzel on the on the on the webinar today is that his book, The House in the Cloud, has really transformed the way that NetSurian approaches cybersecurity sales and enablement, and in particular how we enable our partners, whether the partner is a managed service provider or a value-added reseller, or even our sales agents, um, you know his message resonates very, very well. And in today's environment where cybersecurity is at the forefront of everybody's thought process, and yet everybody feels like they're doing something for cybersecurity, the, the noise in the industry makes it hard to filter out where you want to go for your business. What kind of products do you want to represent? What kind of messaging do you want to take into your customer? And how do you how do you take that to market? And how do you monetize that? So, I think David's message today is going to be very very interesting. It's been highly impactful to NetSurian as an organization, um, and so we've actually begun to, to take his concepts and incorporate them into how we not only market and message about our products, but also how we think about roadmap items uh, for the technologies that we're developing as well. So uh, a little bit about us, NetSurian is an organization. We've been getting a lot of press lately, uh, both for our security information and event management technology, as well as a new technology called Branch Software Defined Orchestration or Branch SDO. Um, the Event Tracker product has been on the Gartner Magic Quadrant for about 11 years now. Uh, we were one of the leaders in the co-managed SIM space, and we were also one of the leaders that brought um, affordable co-managed and managed SIM solutions down into the SMB and mid-market. Uh, most of those technologies, like uh, legacy technologies, were uh, architected for and priced for enterprise, well outside of the budget for many of the SMB and mid-market customers, anybody from, from you know, 10 to 5, 10 million to 5 billion in revenue. Um, so we're seeing a just tremendous amount of growth and, and uptake from the partner community uh, around that event tracker SIM technology. Uh, and then our branch SDO technology, which was land, uh, launched in uh, the middle of last year, has generated a lot of activity from the press and from the analysts. Uh, you're seeing that technology really, um, you know, more rapidly adopt into the marketplace. <clears throat> so, you know, a couple of customers, um, 
so David, I'm going to make sure that I've got control over these slides here. Uh, but yeah, it's not working for me. So if you wouldn't mind moving the slide, David. Um, you know, we've been around for a long time uh, under various brands. The Netsurian brand is about five years, six years old now. We we work with tens of thousands of, of customers across the globe. Um, name brands that you recognize on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, as well as, you know, SMB customers that are only visible in their local community. Um, the technology scales both on the security uh, information event management and the, the branch SDO. It, the technology scales very, very well, so it's applicable for a, you know, one location business to a, loc a business that has, you know, a couple thousand locations. Um, but it's it's tried and tested and proven in these larger customers to make sure that it works, and then we scale it uh, and size it appropriately for those those SMB customers. Uh, next slide, David. So I've kind of referenced Event Tracker and Branch SDO, um, but Netsurian as an organization has really organized ourselves around two different product pillars. The first is SD Branch software-defined branch uh, orchestration from a networking perspective, and then security operations. So uh, under the SD branch uh, product portfolio, we've got the platform, which is uh, the orchestration layer. Um, we've got a piece of hardware that sits out at the edge and is managed by the orchestration layer. And then we also have the ability to add on some managed services. And so you, you see on the left-hand side there, we can offer both branch SDO and event tracker in three different flavors, managed by the customer, driven by the customer, managed or driven by the partner, or managed and driven by NetSurian. Same technology, same fundamental platform, uh, it's just who is operating it on a day-to-day -day basis. And the same thing goes for event tracker. Uh, we have uh, the SIM platform, the security information and event management platform, and it can be managed by the customer, it can be managed by our partners, or it can be managed by us. It really, um, it really depends upon what the requirements of the opportunity are. So a little bit more detail about each of those. Uh, next slide, David. Uh, the, the branch SDO solution is a software-defined networking solution built for SMB or branch types of customers. And it's comprised of, starting from the bottom, what we call our CXD, which is the piece of hardware. Uh, it is uh, an edge routing device that includes firewall capabilities, it includes integrated Wi-Fi, it includes integrated 4G LTE failover capabilities, and it's all managed through a cloud orchestrator, um, which communicates with the device and offers some additional uh, daisy chain or service chaining opportunities through the branch SDO services gateway. And then finally, the managed services layered on top of that. Many small businesses don't have networking skills or capabilities, so we enable the managed services for that to be done by our partners or by NetSurian, depending upon uh, what the partner's strengths and capabilities are. Uh, next slide, David. The, the product family that many of you are probably most familiar with is Event Tracker. That's our security operations uh, product platform. And it's built on the technology developed in Event Tracker Security Center. That is the SIM technology. Um, part and parcel to that is a log management uh, platform. Uh, the log management capabilities feeds the SIM, and then we can layer on our SOC services, our Security Operations Center services. For larger customers, more complicated customers, that's known as Symphonic. For smaller SMB and mid-market customers, less complicated networks, that's known as Essentials. So those are the, the, the two product families, uh, major categories that you're familiar with. And within the Event Tracker brand, we just launched something called Event Tracker EDR. It stands for Endpoint Detection and Response. That particular technology within the cybersecurity space is becoming uh, a hot commodity. And what we've done is we've leveraged the base event tracker technology, created this EDR capability, and what we're finding is that uh, it's really, really targeted towards that endpoint, the endpoint detection and response. Um, as you know, servers that are in the data center, the firewalls are all managed by security uh, certified IT staff. The endpoint is typically in the hands of a user who doesn't really understand cybersecurity, doesn't really understand technology, and is highly susceptible to phishing, 
um, social engineering attacks or just you know visiting the wrong website and getting a drive-by infection so the CDR technology is geared towards that unmanaged endpoint and we have the um, managed services the SOC services that blend on top of that and we feel like when you combine SIM and you combine EDR into one security orchestration platform it's like a Reese's cup it's better together uh, we've just had some some third-party analysts review the technology, got a triple A rating, which is the highest rating uh, that this company uh, provides, and they analyzed a number of EDR technologies. Uh, so we're very, very proud of this. This is brand new on the marketplace. We love to have a conversation with you about it uh, or demonstrate it to you. Um, the final slide that I'd like to talk about is how Netsurian goes to market. I mentioned that, you know, we're very, very tied to our partners, right? So today, channel partners make up about 65% of our sales, and that is from a year ago, it made, channel partners made up about five to 10% of our sales. So you can see that Naturian as an organization is, is driving very, very rapidly towards uh, the channel-driven sales model. Uh, and we work with three different kinds of uh, partners. We work with managed service providers, we work with resellers or value-added resellers, and we also work with sales agents. For um, for both or for all three of those partner types, we have specific partner programs that offer specific benefits uh, and compensation goals. And so, if you're interested in learning more about that, we'd love to have you reach out to our, our channel account managers or our partner development managers. Um, and so if you're a VAR, for example, not only can you get the, the solutions from us directly, but you can also buy them through Cenex as a, as a distribution partner. Um, that was something that we announced early in the year. So with that said, a little bit about Netsurian, a little bit about our product families and about our channel focus and our channel programs. I'm gonna turn it over to David, give him the, the meat of the, the conversation today to talk about how cybersecurity can really be repositioned uh, to be a, a major driver of your revenue moving forward. So appreciate it, David Stelzel. Take it away. Okay, thank you, Guy. And um, let me see if I can get my self online here. Okay, so hopefully you can see me. And really, we want to just turn the corner a little bit here. So you got great technology, but one of the big problems out there is how do I get business with it, right? How do I get people out there to actually want more things you know, another product, right? Another expense, another budget item. And so really what this section is about, we got about 30 minutes together, so I'm gonna really have to move through this kind of quickly, but I wanna show you a key concept here that helps you get leads and get them into your sales pipeline and close, okay? I wanna help you do that one very thing. So uh, I wanna kind of just briefly tell you, here's where we're headed, okay? So there are probably 90% of the people you're calling on right now have an urgent need that they don't really know about, but if you could show it to them, they would do business with you. I also know that probably a lot of you started your business knowing that you were a technical expert, you know, a lot, have a lot of insight into technology, into networking, into servers, into cloud, into all the things that you know the businesses you call on need, but yet you get in front of them, and a lot of times they just treat it like a commodity. You know, it's, it's all about price to them, and they're not listening. I don't know how Many people I've spoken to are frustrated that I've got insight, I've got ideas, I can be an advisor to this person, but they just don't get it. So how do we show them, right? That's where we're headed today. If you are in the MSP business, you're trying to grow your business, your business is flat or not growing as fast as you want it to be, this is for you here today. If you're an expert in IT and you think people aren't really listening to you, this is for you today. If you're just trying to multiply your business so that someday you can actually afford to retire, that's what this is for today. That's where we're headed. We don't want to stay out of the commodity business. So let me see how I can uh, just change my slides here. Why? Why? Oh, here we, okay, here we go. Sorry. Oops, it's, it's a little delay. That's what it is. Okay, so here's the key, right? We all know monthly recurring revenue is critical to the business. If you have been following the industry, have been in this industry any, any length of time, you know 2003 was kind of the turning point of moving away from up and down project work and having a lot of bench time to deal with and moving to recurring revenue type contracts that's what we want to grow and if we look at how the business is built <laughs> that's what brings stability that's what helps me build margin that's what helps me create the resilience i want in my business depending on where the economy is that i can still grow 
but even more importantly than that, it's the place where I really want my expertise to shine as I build my business. However, working on all that stuff, all that managed service stuff, while needed and important, it is a commodity, a total commodity. And so as we try to get in into new customers, I find that really nobody cares about your company, your certifications, or your managed services. They're focused on their business, their customer issues, their people, their hiring, and all that sort of stuff. Everybody already has a network. Everybody's got servers. Everybody's in the cloud. And they're saying, I got it covered. I don't really need anything else, or I don't want to spend any more money. But yet there's something out there that really does matter, and that is security. So if you look at business today, everything is moving digital. We kind of all get that. We're all living in our smartphones and living in our laptops and living in the cloud. That's just where everything is. How do we apply that to business? Here's the key thing, okay? So write this down. I hope you have your, your pen here with you and a piece of paper, but data is the most important asset that any of your prospects or customers have right now. It's not their people, it's not their infrastructure, it's not even their product, it's their data. Because everything they plan to do, all their strategy, all their finances, all their customer data, everything about them is all in digital form somewhere and it needs to be secure, and they really don't know if it is or not. Now, here's a key point, or actually two key points. If you wanna sell a managed recurring revenue program, whatever it is, it has to be led with security. In fact, if you do traditional MSP services where you do backups and you monitor servers and do patching and all that sort of stuff, it, you're selling one of two things. You're either selling something to help them save money, which is, by the way, going to cost you because now they're spending less, or you're providing a new level of security, even if you're just doing basic managed services. And I would argue not enough security, but look at it for a minute, right? What are you doing? You're helping them keep their systems up and running, available to the end users, backed up. All those things are security related, right? What is security? It is confidentiality, integrity, availability, those three things. Anything that manages those three things is security. But we wanna take that a step further because digital assets are going unprotected as companies move into the digital world even more than they are right now. So write this down. If I wanna sell managed services of any kind, I have to grow it with security. I have to lead with digital asset protection. You might jot it down like that. Think about it as digital asset protection, not security, because that's really what it is. I'm gonna protect those assets. And if you wanna protect assets, the other thing that you need to know is that you can't sell security without some kind of assessment. You see, it's just an insurance policy or it's just a, a measure of some kind of protection that I don't know if I need if there's no analysis, if there's no report that tells me how much exposure I actually have. So those two things, you wanna sell managed services recurring revenue, you have to do it with security unless you wanna lose money, or, and you have to use an assessment to drive that security message. That's the way it works. So what I wanna take you through here are three concepts, three, three principles to build on that right now in the little bit of time we have. First of all, it is the assessment that will close your security business. Number two, every prospect you're calling on right now, at least 99.9% .9 of them need an assessment. I'm gonna show you why that is. I'm gonna prove that to you. And then number three, it's not all about security but security leads the way. Once you get in with security, you can go anywhere because now you've established yourself not as a commodity bar of old, but as the trusted risk advisor who then has their fingers into every digital thing that a company does. Okay, those three things, that's what we're gonna focus on right now. And we're gonna hit them in that order. So again, take some notes. This is not theory, by the way. This is real stuff because this is how I built my business. In fact, I just want to take you back just for a quick second and tell you where all this stuff comes from. So again, I'm Dave Stelzel. As Guy mentioned, I wrote The House in the Cloud. I've written several other books as well. But this book right here is the book that tells you how to get out of the commodity business and how to get into something that has high margin and is in urgent demand. So early on in my career, I got into security in 1995. That's just about a year after Checkpoint. But let me tell you how I got into security because it's kind of an interesting thing. I got into technology in 1984, okay, when we were just starting to roll out local area networks on ArcNet 1.2, I think it's 1.2, screaming megabits per second, and Novell servers, if you remember when they actually made hardware way back when. 
And what I was trying to do, I just graduated from college and then I got married right out of college. I didn't have all these kids, by the way. I do have, there's a lot of kids. I got seven kids, just one wife. And we were, you know, building our family early on. And I really had a couple of things in mind as we were doing this. I was working in the Fortune 500, working for Johnson & Johnson. Then I made a move to Bank of America. At the time, I was working for Chuck Robbins. You might know that name. He's the CEO of Cisco today. I'm the guy who taught him what a router is. Just want to put that on video here. Okay. And he has obviously climbed the ladder and done a great job and, you know, built a, helped build a very successful company or taken over one. Anyway, we're working together in this bank and we're both you know, kind of at the bottom level of the bank, okay? he just come out of college too, graduated from Chapel Hill, and we're working on building this business. And I've got a couple of desires, and one is to do something significant like everybody that graduates from school and just thinks, you know, hey, I got, I've, I, I'm smart, right? I want to do something meaningful in life. And two, I want to make some money so that I can give my family a decent lifestyle. Two big aspirations I think most of us have. Well, we're working together, and Chuck was not the manager that, that hated me, but I went into Chuck's office one day, and I said, Chuck, we've been doing some of the most advanced technology out there, trying to automate lending systems and rolling out wide area networks across the U.S. at the time. You know, it was just state-of-the-art stuff. It hardly worked, but we were getting it to work. And I said to him, is there a roadmap, a career path inside this company where we're actually going to be able to move up? And he said to me, well, I got news for you. I'm leaving. I'm going to Wellfleet, which was then Cisco's number one competitor. And he said to me, you can have my job. I mean, I'll recommend you for it. But we had just acquired a bank in Texas, and they were taking over the IT organization. And he said to me, they hate us. <laughs> okay, they're all going to get the good jobs, and we're going to be left with the bad jobs. I can just tell you that right now. So he recommended I leave. And at that point, I went and spoke to a good friend of mine who was doing all of our cabling, an entrepreneur and still a good friend of mine, this guy, Fred. And I asked him the same question. He said, yeah, you should leave. You should go out on the consulting side with this leading edge technology and do something significant. Well, I got together with three other guys and we started a company. This is 1995. And I'll tell you what, we had a big vision, right? We were gonna go out and, and build this company. And it was when we started that company that I discovered something really amazing. I'd been in IT all this time, right? And so now I'm on the selling side. I mean, I'm technical, but I'm, you know, having to drive business. There's four of us to drive business. And the thing I learned that month or two or that first quarter was it is hard to sell. <laughs> you know, I thought salespeople drove around in their BMWs, played golf all the time and went to free lunches and stuff like that and got big paychecks for doing really nothing. Okay. And it was a rude awakening. And so we're sitting in this conference room about three months into it, way in the hole. We didn't have any money, but investors had invested in our little company. And they were asking us, where's the money? Where's our return? And we are hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and just scratching our heads. I had hair back then. And it was this one guy that we hired from Appalachian State right out of college. And he came to me and he said, you know, I think we ought to be in the security business. This is 1995, a year after Checkpoint started. And I was like, well, what, what does that mean? You know, and he started to explain it to me and it really made a lot of sense. We should be in the security business. And you know what? We didn't get rid of all our other stuff, but we did start working on the security space. And you know what that did for us? It opened doors. I mean, it opened doors like crazy. We got into big companies like BMW and some of the big banks in Charlotte, where I'm from, and, and Michelin Tire and many mid-market companies. And you may not call on those big companies, but my point is it was a value proposition that set us apart. Well, it's not just an anomaly because Several years later, that company was sold to another large integrator, and I went to work for a global integrator. They didn't have a security practice. I pitched that to them and said, let's start one. This is the year 2000. And in three years, we had a $33 million business on security from zero. That first business went from zero to 75 million, by the way, in just five years. Okay. What I'm saying is it's a repeatable process. And for the last 15 years, I've been working with companies all over the world, helping them either get into the security business or take what they've got and grow it. And if I were to throw out some of the names that I've worked with that are big companies today over the last 15 years, you would recognize their names because they're big. Assessments drive security. I learned this from Price Waterhouse because I got to work with them just a couple of years between the bank and working for and doing the startup in 1995, about two years. Everything they do leads with an assessment and assessments drive big business. And what the other thing they do is they cut out a lot of the competition in the process. So let me give you a couple of examples of what I'm talking about here. 
one of the early deals that I worked on was with a bank down in Charleston. And we were in there trying to sell this firewall to them. You know, it's a pretty simple commodity sale. Of course, back then, a firewall was a $100,000 project. It's not anymore, but it really was back then. And I remember just struggling over this. We had an IT guy involved and he really liked one brand and we represented another brand because we were brought in by a manufacturer and we, you know, we couldn't trade horses, we wanted to be loyal to that company. And we're just kind of going around and around and stretching weeks into weeks and more weeks and a lot of costs driving back and forth. And it dawned on me, if I were back working with Price Waterhouse, what would those guys upstairs do? They would come in with, a, with some kind of assessment, some kind of study, some kind of gap analysis. And so using some different strategies that I've documented in some of my writings, we made our way up the ladder to an EV of operations, EVP. And when I got in front of this guy, IT guy was still in the room, by the way. And instead of talking to him about firewalls, I knew that was going to happen. Instead of talking to him about firewalls, we started talking to him about risk. Not product, risk, exposure. And we got into that conversation, the IT guy kind of checked out. None of this made any sense to him because we're talking about business. But as we talked about risk, we got his interest, the EVP's interest. And here's what we did. This is called the conversion blueprint. I use this on a lot of my training programs to show how do we measure conversion and how do we accelerate conversion all the way from marketing to sales meetings into projects and into annuity services. So each one of these arrows represents a point of, a point of conversion. And you see the middle box is blocked out because most sales goes like this. I get into the sales meeting, which is my education box, and I'm trying to convert to something. Ask any sales guy going into any sales meeting, and 90% of the time he's gonna say, well, I'm there to collect more information and see if they have needs, like an introductory meeting, or I'm trying to sell them XYZ product. And that turns into a three, six, nine month sales cycle, and eventually they're shopping you, and you're losing margin, and they don't really care about your expertise, and they're just looking at the dollar. But that middle piece, when I start to insert that piece in, the assessment process, it changes the game. And so with this guy, this is the approach that we took. Here's what we showed him. Forget about all the assessments you've seen out there. This is a different kind of assessment. This assessment measures risk. And by the way, if you wanna get a copy of this risk assessment, at the bottom of this slide, you can see my website, stelzel.us. If you go to that website and just scroll down a little bit, there are three boxes and the middle one is a free copy of my, of my security assessment, okay? Feel free to download it. There is no obligation, okay? So that particular assessment is the key right there. I think that URL right there doesn't actually work because we changed it. But anyway, go to that box on my website, stelzel.us. There it is. When we showed him what this means, okay, what does this mean? It means instead of looking at all the vulnerabilities and all that stuff that are important to the security guy, I'm talking to a business guy now. And what he wants to know is, what's the impact if this goes down or I can't get to that or this happens? And then more importantly, what's the likelihood? No different than if you were to go to a doctor today and, and have an annual physical and of course, when you get to an annual physical, if you have any symptoms at all, like shortness of breath, or you've had some issues with you know, pressure on your chest or any of those kinds of things over the last several months, you're wondering, you know, what would happen if I had a heart attack? Or what would happen if I were diagnosed with cancer? What would the impact be to my life, my family, my kids, my, my job, all the things that I do? And then the big question to the doctor is this, well, what's the likelihood, right? Am I good? Or is there some likelihood that there's something bad? And that piece of information right there drives action. If that doctor comes back and says, this blood work doesn't look quite right, what are you gonna do? You're gonna dive into something more meaningful, a bone marrow test, a biopsy, something that costs money, something that takes time, and likely something that's somewhat painful to find out what's my likelihood. And when I put this thing in front of that executive, he said, I wanna know that. What is the likelihood that my company will be in trouble in the next several months? You know, I would have done that assessment for free because I knew it was gonna to lead to big business, but he was willing to pay $35,000 for it. And by the way, this, this picture of this building looks big. That's because they've grown since I was there. It was a much smaller company at the time, but yet they were willing to spend quite a bit of money to find out the answer to this one question. The more important thing is the next day on the phone, I'm talking to him about what he needs to accomplish, and I upsold this thing to 65,000. And when I delivered the results, they had some really big holes, which they wanted to take action on immediately because they're a bank. And that led to about $500,000 in services, product sales, and eventually other stuff like an IP telephony deal. And we signed a three-month recurring revenue contract. Now, big warning. 
assessments don't convert unless they are done correctly. In other words, they have to measure impact likelihood. They have to show exposure and they have to speak to executives. If they don't, they don't work. So I want you to download my template. Here's the thing. If you go to any company and you say, do you do security assessments? You're going to find out that they do if they do any kind of security. And then you're going to ask them what their conversion rate is and they're going to scratch their head and they're not going to be sure. But if you did some studies, some analysis, I bet most of them would be at the 15% level. And I know that because I ask the question all the time and I work with thousands of technology providers around the world on this stuff. Okay. Here's what I'm saying. I want to get in there and I want to be engaged with what I call asset owners, people who have liability, people who care about data. I want to understand what their users are doing, how they create and use data, delete it, store it, whatever they do with it. And only at that point do I start looking at the technology. The number one mistake question people always ask me is, what do you use for scanning? It doesn't really matter. What does matter is what's important to them and how likely it is to have a problem. And a scanner will never tell you that. By the way, if you put some kind of detection technology on it, we'll get into that more later. And Guy's going to talk a little bit about his product set at the end. These kinds of tools do tell us that kind of stuff. And that's what we want to know. But this thing right here should be on the front page of your assessment deliverable. The graph, the critical assets, and right behind it, you'll see on my, on my template are a list, and not a long list, just a short list of the most important issues, the three to five major issues that that company executives need to deal with. And right out of the Wall Street Journal, that's what they want to know. What's my exposure? The number one issue among all CISOs right now is that question. And if you're talking to a small business owner, they want to know too. They just don't know how to ask the question. And so that's up to you to show them that. Okay, secret number two. So number one, you've got to lead with an assessment. You show them risk leads to action. Okay, number two, everybody needs one of these. Now I know this because I get in front of audiences all the time and I get them to convert. And I wanna show you how I get them to convert. So every day there's news, right? Every day somebody's been hacked into, there's a ransomware attack, there's a crypto money attack, there's some kind of ID theft attack. There's something happening in the news but you and I know that you can tell those stories all day long and your prospect will never pull out their checkbook and write you a check because they think they've got it covered. Okay. They're always going to think that. So we need something a little bit different. Okay. We can't be in there talking about firewalls, antivirus products and all that kind of stuff. That message dies. And I want to show you why I'm a big uh, student of brain science. I've been studying brain science for a couple of years now. And, and it's fascinating to think, to see how the brain actually operates. But here's what happens. There are two sides of the brain. You know that there's a right and a left. And most of the time when someone says that, we think, well, that person's right brain, they're kind of artsy. And that person's left brain, they're kind of analytical. Well, that's true, but we all have two brains, two sides, okay? And when you get in there and you start talking about intellectual, logical kinds of things, you're speaking to the left brain and that person. However, whether you see them as a logical, analytical person or not, everybody, according to the neurologists that I follow, makes their decisions with their right brain. Write that down somewhere because everyone who's failing at closing people fast is failing to understand how we make decisions. In fact, if you've ever had a conversation that was just so logical with your spouse or your teenage child or whoever it was, and you just can't get them to see the obvious, it's because you're speaking to their left brain and their belief center sits in their right brain. So here's what happens, okay? There are four stages on the right-hand side and there's one on the left. This is how your brain operates. Okay, one and two levels are subconscious. This is where things exist like, who am I and what is it like me to do? That's my number one subconscious thing. All day long, my brain at level one is telling me who I am and what it's like me to do in any given circumstance. Number two is looking for the things that create joy and create fear and telling my body what to do about it. And then we go up from there. So when I walk in the door and I start talking about product, where does it go? It goes to four plus on the left side and the brain checks out. Guy pulls out his iPhone, not guy, but the guy, and starts doing his email. However, when I walk in with an emotionally charged message around fear, and I'm not talking about the old FUD where I'm making stuff up. I'm talking about real security issues that I believe are real. I'm going to hit him at level one. What's it like me to respond? Number two, I've got a fear issue. I'm either going to fight or flee or do something. Number three is a, is a conscious level right brain thing that happens where my brain goes, do I know what to do right now? And the answer is usually no, because this is a business guy with a security fear. So that goes to level four and level four asks the question, is there somebody here who can help me? 
And when the brain asks that question and you've established yourself as a trusted person standing there with a process in mind, then four plus kicks in on the left side and says, okay, what are the steps? Okay, this message works. And as a result, I go around the country and I speak to audiences all the time, your prospects on the behalf of my customers. And we close these people in groups because this message works. Okay, what are we doing? We are converting to an assessment because what the left brain wants to know is what's my risk? And then it goes on to a conversion to remediate once I show them they have an issue. And if they didn't have an issue, there'd be no conversion, but there always is. Now, I don't have time to take you through my whole messaging because we just don't have time in a 30 minute thing, but there's a framework that I use and I just wanna give you a quick picture of how it works. There's a house, a cloud and a coverage model. And I use this to get my buyer or my prospect to visualize their home and how they secure their home, okay? So think about your own home for just a quick second, and usually I'll take about 15 minutes to go through this with someone, but this is where conversion happens, and believe it or not, it only takes 15 minutes, okay? That is incredible, but it's brain science. It is not something else, okay? It's just purely science. It happens. You do this, that happens. Okay, so think about your home for a second. They've got their doors and their windows and stuff. They lock them up at night. My alarm is set. I've got dogs in the backyard. I got three of them out there. You know, you might have some kind of weapon in your home. You might have a, a you know, you, you got your number memorized, 911 to get to the police, crime watch, which does nothing. Maybe you've got some cameras. Okay, we have all that stuff. And I want them to picture all that stuff. But the truth is, none of it actually keeps your house safe. What does? It is the framework, the system in place that protects us. It takes these pieces and it puts them into a system from left to right that's timed and sequenced, a protection, a detection, a response. Now, if I go out to Gartner Group, they're going to tell me that 90% of the security investment is in column one. But in fact, column two is the most important column. And by the way, that's why we're working on this webinar here together, because NetSurian has a detection type technology, right? But few people understand it, which is why it's important to have the expert analyzing the data so that there could be a response and who's going to respond does the end user have that capability rarely right and so there's they're missing the two big elements protection is merely a tripwire it's the firewall it's the password it's the encryption but it does not keep hackers out and that's why every day we have all these statistics that tell us that people are getting hacked into and there's no way to detect them it takes like 200 years no, I said the brain is going to go to level four and say, is there somebody here with an answer? And that's when I need to pull out my coverage model, which says, here's what your architecture should look like. Protection, detection, response, focus on detection, time to response across people, technology, physical. And when I put all that together, I get an awesome security architecture. It's not 100%, but I've just taken my risk down to an acceptable level, and now I'm going to maintain it forever in a managed service program. And that's what managed services is all about. And that's what creates long-term contractual agreement. Nobody's going to leave you if you're showing them every month that you are defending them. Now, I'm not saying get rid of your managed service offering if you have one, because once you get in there, you can go anywhere. Why? Because now you've established yourself as the advisor. You're the guy with the coverage model. You're the person who understood risk, impact, likelihood. You measured it, and now you're ready to remediate it, and you're standing by to respond if something happens. It's about detecting quickly and responding before it's too late. So number three, we, have to, we need to now build our ascension ladder. It turns out that buyers will only buy one of three things. I would, I would put four on there if ROI actually worked, but it doesn't, and it never works in security. There are three things, operational efficiency, competitive advantage, risk mitigation. Those other two save costs, but risk mitigation is responded to faster. Why? Because the brain always responds to a cancer message before it responds to an investment message. You're always going to go fix that thing that's going to kill you before you do that thing that's going to get you rich, as long as you can convince your owner or your prospect that it's urgent, and it is urgent, and the assessment will tell us that. Okay, there they are, the four things. And the assessment is what brings it out. Now, here's a quick example. Here's a company within the telephony business, okay? It's a commodity business. It truly is. Successful company calling on the mid-market. They got involved with a training program that I put together, and they said, we want to learn how to do this. So they went through an online program that I offer called the Security Sales Mastery Program, sent their sales guys through it, 
And as they were going through it, they said, you know what? We want to do one of those live events you always talk about. Now, this is not about live events. You could do this one-on-one. -on -one. You could do it on a webinar. You can do it in a live event. You can do it in all kinds of formats. It's just about getting in front of people and showing them the message. But these guys wanted to do a live event and have me come out there. And I want to tell you, over the last 18 months, I have converted 99.7% of the people that I've spoken to. I'm talking about cold prospects that came to a lunch and learn meeting, which is the only place I get to present this stuff. Okay. So I got, I went out to Kansas city and I met with their sales team. They had gone through my training, reminded them of the key concepts. I'm going to speak in the morning at a breakfast meeting. So it's a lunch and learn, but it's breakfast. And I said, tomorrow we are going to convert a hundred percent of your prospects to a security assessment. Are you guys ready for that? And you know what they did? They looked at me like, how is that possible? That is, that is, that is totally impossible, right? They kind of laughed about it. But you know what? The next morning I showed up, we had gotten 30 people to sign up for this thing. 29 showed up. I know that's a high, a high rate of, uh, of show up, isn't it? Well, we have some strategies we use to get people there, and we got them there. 29 people. The other guy called to cancel, by the way. He didn't just not show. And what did we do? We converted 100% of them. And it was a team effort. It wasn't all about me. It was a message that converts with science, working hand in hand with the sales reps who had learned my stuff, were sitting at the tables, and were scripted out in a script that I give them to simply convert those people right into an assessment, impact likelihood, and we're converting 50 to 60% of those into long-term managed service contracts. Okay, it's a really simple process of conversion and ascension, okay? And once I get them in, I have the opportunity to get access to everybody. I have access to buyers. I shorten my sales cycle because it's urgent. I'm unique because I'm doing exposure, not firewalls. I'm maintaining margin because they can't shop it. Nobody out there is doing this stuff, and I can tell you they're not. And then I'm sending into other lines of business because all their technology is using data. Okay, now we just have a couple of minutes. I just want to quickly show you the program that they went through. I won't spend a lot of time on this, but let me ask you a question. Is this the kind of business you want? One where you are looked at as an advisor, you're not competing on margin, you're not struggling to get people to listen to your message, and it's fairly easy to convert people to some kind of analysis that puts you in the driver's seat, right? I think that's where all of us want to be as we get into the technology business, and it's not that difficult. So the Security Sales Mastery Program, I used to travel all over the world, literally. I mean, I spent like a ton of time in Australia and New Zealand and Africa and all kinds of places doing this stuff live. And then it dawned on me, it is really hard to just get into a different sales process when you go to a one day or a two day or even a three day class. So I put it all online into these modules, six easy modules. And when you go through the modules, what you're doing is you're learning about how to leverage the power of security to beat commoditization and the economy. You're learning about the science of the messaging so that you can apply it to any message, but I give you my message. You can just memorize it and use it. In fact, there's a guy I just was talking to who hit 400% of his quota six months after he took this class. 400% in half a year, okay? And was number one out of 114 reps in his company. By the way, he came out of the food services and, and so he's not technical, okay? Very simple. It's the exact approach that I used to build a $75 million business and then later went on to build a $33 million security business in a larger company. And here's how it works. You go through this program, but I don't want you to fail. So I walk with you side by side. I meet with the people going through this program every single Monday personally online in a Zoom call that's interactive with voice. So you can talk to each other. You can see each other. And you can ask whatever questions you want as you're trying to put together proposals, trying to go through the assessment process, trying to get more leads, working on your marketing stuff, working on your value proposition. Whatever you're working on, it doesn't matter because I know you need leads, I know you need to convert them, and I know you need to drive them into annuity business. And that's what I do. I am a CISSP. I understand the security business. I know there's lots of marketers out there talking about security, but they don't know security. Okay? But I do because I sat through the class and took the eight-hour test and worked in the industry. All right, so here's what you get when you sign up for this program, Security Sales Mastery Program, all the online stuff. I also include some tools, the assessment documents, the templates I use for proposals, outlines to my, to my presentation, even live versions of my presentation that are recorded so you can see exactly how I do it, all kinds of tools that help you do that, even uh, guides on how to get into LinkedIn and Facebook and other social media platforms and apply this message to bring in new leads, just a bunch of stuff to help you bring it all into that conversion blueprint. I meet with you weekly and I give you access to my private forum for life, even when the training is over.
Okay, that's how it works. Okay, if you go on my site, you can buy all this stuff. It costs you about almost $4,000 to do it. The cool thing is that NetSurian has partnered with me and has sponsored this for you so that you can get it for $347 and not have to pay for it all. Okay, so they've offset the price. They're paying for the portion that you don't have to. It's really easy to sign up. You can do one of two ways. If you've got a team, you can email us at training at stelzel.us. If you just go to my site, stelzel.us, and go to the sales development slash security, uh, sales security page, you'll see a description. You'll see all the modules laid out. You'll see a button there. And, if, and you'll see a $997 price tag, and it won't come with all the other stuff I mentioned unless you enter in the code NetSurion. Okay, lowercase, one word. If you enter that in, you're good across the board, and you'll immediately get access to it, access to our training concierge, who will make sure you have access to everything, and I will see you on Monday. Okay, so there it is, and that's how the program works. So I am, I am done. I'm going to turn it back over to Guy. I know that was quick. If you have questions, we're going to have a and a time here in just a moment. So Guy, let me turn it back over to you. Great, David. Thank you very much, sir. <clears throat> We're excited for for all of the attendees today to get into your program, learn what we've learned, um, and help them grow their security business. So what I'd like to do for the next couple of minutes is give the attendees here a little bit of an insight in how we've applied your your uh, house analogy, uh, your your you know the, how you protect your house to our business and our products, and we overlay what we do onto that concept so that our partners are able to message this very easily in a short amount of time, like you said, 10 to 15 minutes, and it really helps the customer, the end user customer, recognize where their gaps are and what the partner can do. So uh, David Ellington, if you wouldn't mind uh, moving the slides for me. Um, so I wanna start by going back to um, the fact that Event Tracker was one of the first companies that provided a co-managed SIM solution using our own technology. So there, there have been companies out there that provide a managed SIM that do managed services around security technologies, but as a manufacturer of the technology, the developer of the technology, we were one of the first about four to five years ago to start offering our own SOC, managing our own software on behalf of our partners and our customers. Uh, Gartner has recently, within the last 18 to 24 months, recognized that co-managed solutions are on the rise, and that a SIM technology delivered as a service really offers partners and customers the ability to simplify and reduce the time to implement the time to get value out of the solution. So, um, David, next slide, please. Um, and then you can just jump right in uh, to the next slide. So what we're going to show here in about five minutes is how you as a partner can show your customer how to protect their business the same way that they would want to protect their home using Event Tracker and NetSure and Technologies. So like David Stelzel said, there's there's really three layers of, of uh, protection here. There's the prevention, detection, and response. And uh, David, if you'll just build this slide out for the sake of time, um, you, you've got everything from the, the locks on your doors to the locks on your windows, to the security lights, uh, signage on your, your front door that says we're protected by an alarm system, all those kinds of things are prevention. You know, trying to deter somebody from kicking the door in. But at the end of the day, if they want to kick the door in or they want to break a window, they're still going to be able to do that. They can get into the house if they want to, even if you put prevention measures in place. So what you need next is you need the ability to detect when that happens. And that's your motion sensors, your, your uh, sensors on your doors and your windows, video cameras. Uh, in case of a fire, you've got your smoke and your carbon monoxide detectors. That's going to generate some sort of notification that somebody's done something that you were not expecting them to do. But then the last piece of that is the ability to respond. So how does your customer respond? Even if they notice that you know, nine months down the road that they've been breached, they still need to respond. So with uh, with your house, you've got the alarm going off, you've got the system calling the fire department or the police department. You know, if you're home, you're gonna respond with a baseball bat or something else, right? So you need all three of these layers in order to effectively protect your home. So how do you, how do you protect your business? How do you help your customers protect their business? So, there you go, David. Yeah, go ahead and build that out. So today, customers are principally relying upon the firewall at the perimeter of their network, and they're relying upon antivirus at the endpoint, 
and they're relying upon cybersecurity awareness training to, to, to teach their end users how to minimize the number of infections. And then the, if you're an MSP or you're in IT department, you're going to be patching the systems. And it's been documented that anywhere between 80 and 90 percent of breaches could be avoided if patching was done the way that it was supposed to be done. But there's patch fatigue. There's so many applications that need to be patched on a, such a frequency basis that a lot of organizations spread that out. They, they'll do it once a month or they'll do it once a quarter. And so those are big gaps in time when known vulnerabilities are left unprotected. So you need something to be able to recognize whenever those known vulnerabilities are taken advantage of. So if you look at the detection capabilities, so you start talking about monitoring logs. You're talking about implementing a SIM technology or an intrusion detection system, subscribing to threat intelligence to give you visibility into the, the known bad actors out there. And then when something is identified, you've got a SOC. You've got people watching eyes on glass. You've got um, some level of automated threat remediation. And then going further down the chain, looking backwards, doing some forensic investigation, you have to be able to go in and look at the, all the data that you've, you've gathered and collected so that you can determine what happened and fix something so it doesn't happen again, right? So where does Event Tracker, where does NetSurian play in? Um, these are the technologies that we provide our customers and we provide our partners. We've got log monitoring. We've got the SIM capability. Because our technology lives at the endpoint, it functions as a host-based IDS. We subscribe to about 50 different threat intelligence feeds and we incorporate that as we're analyzing all of the log data that we're collecting. And then we've got a 24 by seven SOC that is looking at all of those logs, looking at the alerts that are generated and providing not just a notification that something's happened, but we actually provide you with five W's. We provide you with the who, the what, the when, the, wh the where, but then also, what do you want me to do about it? How do I fix it? How do I stop it from happening again? And then on top of all of that, because our technology sits at the endpoint, and because of the enhanced functionality that we announced at RSA with our endpoint detection and response technology, we've got the ability to automatically add in not just a detection and response capability, but the protection aspect as well. We can terminate known bad IP addresses from connecting to your network. We can terminate known bad MD5 hashes from running in your environment. And with the EDR, we can add on top of that protection from unknown processes. So not only are we protecting you from signature-based known bad actors, but we can identify when a new process has, has been launched, analyze that for you, and then protect against that as well. Proactively add that into the um, proprietary event tracker uh, whitelist and blacklist capabilities. So pretty cool stuff. All right, so three slides. I covered that in less than five minutes. And you can wrap up that conversation by asking your customers these questions. So first of all, are you assuming that your perimeter defense is perfect? That there's no way that anybody could get past your firewall? And what happens if they do? What if the attack does get through your firewall or does get past your antivirus? And as we all know, antiviruses are not perfect. Signature-based technologies, even heuristics or, or behavior-based technologies are not perfect. There's always a way to get around it. What are you gonna do about it? Are you confident that all of your endpoints are patched perfectly all the time, that they're protected against all known vulnerabilities, or are there gaps in that? Are you confident that every user on your network is 100% protected against phishing scams, that you don't have an end user that's gonna inadvertently click on attachment or follow a link that's infected? And if, if an employee's login credentials get compromised, which they do on a regular basis because that data lives in multiple systems around the internet, if that does get compromised, how are you gonna know about it? If you're using O365 and somebody logs into an approved login with an approved password, but they're logging in from China instead of Hoboken, New Jersey, how are you gonna know about it? If an IT admin takes their authorized credentials and does something nefarious with it, how are you gonna know that they're doing that? They create a new user, which they then give to admin privileges, and then that fake credential gets used to do something nefarious, how are you gonna know about it? And then you start talking about business. How valuable is your customer's data, or your company's data? 
what kinds of data do you have on there? Obviously, you've got accounting records, you've got intellectual property, you've got customer relationship information. You also have probably connections into your partner networks or into your customer networks. In fact, there's a Chinese hacker group right now that's targeting managed service providers as their goal because they know that if they can crack the MSP, they can get access into all that end user customer network as well. Hundreds of customers from one breach. So I'm gonna wrap it up and just tell you that we're very thankful for the relationship that we've developed with David Stelzel. As I mentioned earlier, his content is really driving us forward aggressively. And I think what we can, we can deliver to our partners is a solution and an approach that is affordable for your customers, affordable for you. It's also efficient, meaning that it allows you to deliver valuable services with a limited amount of investment, a limited amount of time, very easy to install. At the end of the day, it's efficient. Right? It's going to provide you the level of protection, detection, and response that you and your customers need, and hopefully that you'll be able to, to help build the, the want inside of them as well. Next slide, David. Right. So, action items, and then we're done. And we're going we're gonna to finish right before the top of the hour. Um, so, we'd love to schedule a discussion with you. We can talk about Event Tracker. We can talk about Branch SDO and how both of those technologies can be applied very quickly uh, into your customer's environments, into your environment from a test perspective. It can be done so affordably, and then from a management perspective, it's very simple to manage these technologies at scale. We already talked about the discount code that we've uh, negotiated with David for his advanced training, so I highly encourage you to go out and pursue that yourselves. Um, but then also, I would encourage you to go to a, our Catch of the Day website. Our SOC team is gold. They're motivated to find those hard-to-find security threats and vulnerabilities and breaches. And we publish those uh, at the Catch of the Day. It's a website that uh, the next slide will show you, uh, the URL for that. But that gives you real-world examples of how Event Tracker, our technologies, and our SOC team are able to 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 protect, prevent, detect, and respond. Um, so we appreciate your time. I'm gonna turn it back over to David Ellington for uh, a few minutes of, of Q&A. We might run a few minutes past the top of the hour, but we wanna make sure that we we're able to, to answer any questions that you might have. Thanks so much, Guy. Uh, we do have a couple of questions, uh, and we still have time for a couple more if anybody wants to put some into the chat box there. Um, let's start off with, this one, everyone has security on their website. Um, how do we differentiate between people who say they do and you guys? Yeah, so um, so I wanted to, to make a comment. I get asked that question all the time, and I'm sure, Guy, you might have some, some thoughts on it as well. But when I go out and I speak at conferences like a distributor conference where there are you know hundreds of, of resellers out there, I always ask the question, how many of you guys are really in the security? Well, first I ask, how many of you have security on your website? Usually it's like 100% of the audience. But then I ask, leave your hand up if you're really in the security business. And all the hands go down. Usually about 10% of those hands are left up out of a few hundred people that actually do it. Now, that doesn't mean they're not talking about it and saying they do it, but I want you to go into this realizing they're not doing it. Okay, which means they don't really have partners behind them that are providing the kinds of services you just heard about. They're really just doing like firewall management, meaning they change a few things. Now, the other thing that I know is that all the assessments that I see are primarily scanned, and I'm not going to name any names, but there are some, you know, SMB class scanners out there which provide almost zero value, <laughs> meaning they don't find any of the things that Guy just mentioned. They just come back with some reports about things like some ports are open and some patches are missing. And I'm telling you, business owners don't speak that language. It's kind of meaningless to them. They're looking around their environment going, well, everything looks fine to me. I don't have any more money to spend. So I need to show up with some kind of risk analysis that's impact likelihood that speaks to somebody with a financial mind. When they see a graph like that, it reminds them of stuff like the stock market. What's the impact if my stocks go up? What's the likelihood this guy's going to grow or shrink? Should I invest? I mean, that's kind of the thing, you know? I relate it frequently to medical kind, kinds of things because they speak that language. The average business owner out there is somewhere between 45 and 70, 
And they know that language because anybody in that age range is starting to think about health a little bit more seriously. So if you use the messaging that speaks to them, you're going to go, you're going to bypass all those people out there that are talking about firewalls, passwords, and 2FA, which also is meaningless to these people. So, you know, so it's working. And the point is it's converting when I get out there. Yeah, I would back that up by saying, um, you know, partners in general today are, are really getting hammered by the market, the, the analysts, the press, the vendors, and saying cybersecurity, cybersecurity, cybersecurity. There's a ton of product out there. Uh, but, but like David said, selling a product, selling a firewall, selling an antivirus solution, selling an EDR solution, selling a SIM, is, gets you part of the way there. But the ability to add those managed services, because at the end of the day, customers are not interested in buying tools. They're buying, they're buying, right? They don't want to hire people to manage a tool. They want to get an SLA from a from a vendor, from a provider that says, we're going to be watching this 24-7, whether it's your network that we're monitoring or it's your SIM environment, your security environment that we're monitoring. We want to be able to, to know that we've got protection 24-7 and they know that they can't do it themselves. And even most managed services companies can't really do it themselves because the investment of building up a SOC, five to seven people, plus all the, the tools and the technology, it's you know a couple million dollars a lot of times. So what, what NetSurian can provide you is not only the tool, the technology, the platform, but we also can provide you the NOC services if you need it for managing the network. We can provide you the SOC services if you need it for managing the security uh, environment. So we can help you get the rest of the way and capture not only the product sale, but also that annuity managed services and maintain your position as, as a trusted advisor and part of that, that customer's organization. You got another question, David Ellington? Yeah, I got one more question for you. Um, I need more leads. How do I get people to listen to this message? <laughs> so I, I would like to take a stab at that. We do a lot of lead generation work with is a big problem. And what we found is that if if you are uh, providing answers out there to questions that they really are asking. So there's two things that you ought to be doing. One is you ought to be putting content about stuff that people care about. I always encourage people to go back to your website, to your blog, to your social media, and see what you're posting out there. And a lot of people are using aggregated content that comes from a manufacturer and it has, you know, it's like, you know, the latest patches for Microsoft. Nobody cares about that stuff. But if you go to a, there's a website out there called answerthepublic.com, answerthepublic.com. And on that site, if you ask a question, it'll tell you if that's a popular question out there. Are people asking that question? So as an example, if you type in what's ransomware, you know what? It's not that popular. If you type in how do I know if my iPhone's been compromised, that is a popular question. So, so I would play around with that a little bit and see what are the, the things that are really being asked about out there and then start writing about those things. Has my network been compromised, by, by the way, is also a very popular question. And that's a question that can be answered with this technology right here, but it needs to be preempted with some content. I'm a big fan of using lead magnets, you know, one sheet downloads, here's five things to look for in case you've been compromised. That gets you your contact information, follow up with a phone call and have a discussion about it. And then, man, if you can move them into an assessment, it's going to show urgent issues, and then you're driving into some way to manage that ongoing because that's a point in time, and that's where that whole MSP thing has to come in. Yeah, I'll back that up. I mean, David's much more in tune with the generating of the leads. Um, I'm really in tune with how do we take that lead and turn it into a prospect, you know, a legitimate potential customer. And I would say two things. Um, the first thing that I've learned over the last 24 months in this position is. Um, if you're using generic cybersecurity statistics, um, it's probably not going to do you really well because everybody knows that cybersecurity is important. They all know that there are risks out there, but they also feel like if they've done the basics of firewall and antivirus, that they're protected. So they kind of they let that stat go in one ear and out the other ear. I would really find some statistics that apply to the customers that you're trying to target. If you're talking to SMB customers, Find statistics, statistics that apply to SMB customers and then further show them statistics that show um, even if you've got a firewall and even if you've got an antivirus, 
you're still at risk. Like the the, the patching statistic, 80 to 90 percent of, of cyber breaches occurred with known vulnerabilities that if they had been patched correctly, uh, they would have been blocked. That kind of statistic uh, is really uh, important. And the second thing that I would say is inside the house in the cloud, the book, David talks about an advisory positioning statement. I would really work on developing your advisory positioning statement. So when you're in a quick conversation with somebody, you can rapidly tell them what you do as an organization in words that resonate with them. It helps them understand, apply it to to their life instead of using you know, acronyms and, and industry speak that they're not really gonna get, right? So I'm not gonna go into that. I'm just gonna tell you to buy the book and read it and go through his training to understand what that advisory positioning statement is. But I think those two things will really help convert the, the leads that you generate into actionable engaged prospects. All right. Well, thank you to both of you for all the information you shared today. We are uh, a little bit over the top of the hour here, so I think I'm going to go ahead and close things down. Um, just a reminder, we will be sending out a recording of this webcast to everyone along with uh, the coupon code that uh, David had mentioned during the webcast. So be on the lookout for that within the next couple of days. Once again, thank you to David Steltzel and thank you to Guy Cunningham. Everybody have a great day. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate your time today.